hurtling to Earth at over 200 miles an hour, well, each to their own. <laughs> They're based at Sibson Airfield near Peterborough, and Isabella Clark went up to meet them. The ultimate high, jumping from a plane at 12,000 feet. You may think they're crazy, but for skydivers, this is what makes life worth living. It's a real wild buzz, basically. Um, you go out and you're just two miles away from the planet, they're standing on your head doing 260 miles an hour. I mean, it is real good fun. <laughs> I like nothing better than to be able to swoop down to a formation, stop, pick up grips on it, and know that I can just drop them and just fly relative to it. It's beautiful. The smell of the jet fuel and then just like getting in and it's noisy and you're there with all your friends and just like the adrenaline rush and then you jump out and then it's just, it's just brilliant. It's just, uh, it's just like falling. And it's, well, I don't know. Is it like flying? I don't know. It's just brilliant. <laughs> Peter Allen is one of the country's top skydivers. He's a full-time coach and in the national skydiving team. After 16 years in the sport, his view of it is very reassuring to the lily-livered. Jumping itself isn't that frightening once you take it up as a sport. It's just the beginning stages. What about dangerous? It is dangerous, for sure. It's certainly no more dangerous than getting in your car and driving down the road. Um, the statistics prove that, for sure. When in Britain, our national team is based here at Sibson Airfield near Peterborough. It's the biggest and oldest civilian base in the country. But the team spends much of the year in Florida. The main reason we go to the States is for the weather, but obviously finances, it's always been an option in skydiving. We've not had the sponsorship of other sports and that the Americans, the French, Italians, um, Russians have had. And what we need to do now is get the money into the sport so that we can actually put ourselves right at the top of the tree. The weather is a problem here. Skydivers need good visibility. That means the addicts here for a training course with Pete spend a lot of time waiting around. But Pete can cope with that. He teaches them a new formation on the ground. What we do is we leave, perform as many formations as we can in the 35 seconds allotted to us. Different formations, spinning pieces around, getting back together. This is formation skydiving. Four people make up the formation, and the fifth is a cameraman who films it all as he too free falls with the camera strapped to his helmet. It's just a normal camera of what you buy from any shop. Uh, all we have to do is just tape it all up because of all the wind. We don't look for the eyepiece. What we got is an actual sight, and we line the uh, eyepiece up, the lens with the sight, but formation skydiving is by no means all the sport has to offer. There's freestyle, described as ballet in the air. And this is the most radical of the airborne arts. This is free flying. Two skydivers, one cameraman, diving towards the earth, feet first or head first. Free flying is multi-dimensional movement in the air um, with another person. So basically it's doing loops and twists around somebody else. Um, it's not staying in one position, it's going as fast as you can, spinning round, looping. It's hard to describe, but it's very good fun. <laughs> good fun for those with nerves of steel, but even the faint-hearted are catered for here. This is trust. The novice is strapped to the expert, the life of one in the hands of the other. For 12,000 feet, they fall together. About a minute of freefall, then several minutes of a more gentle parachute descent. Even I'm tempted, and I suffer from vertigo. Next year, the British national team is aiming for a medal-winning position in the World Championships. As for now, skydivers hope their sport will start to get the recognition it deserves. Oh, fantastic. Novice was actually praying, do you think? Yes, she was. <laughs> <laughs>